Solid Rock. Good to see Sister Minnie back this morning. Amen. Good to see Keith and Lori back this morning. Amen. Good to be in the house of God this morning. Good to come out and worship Jesus Spirit and truth. I saw a little thing yesterday. It said, we need to quit playing hide and seek with God, for he's going to say, ready or not, here I come. You know what I
This week I'm blessed of the Lord. Can you shout Amen? Well, glory, glory. Can you sing it now? I'm on this praise it, Is it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Raise your hands towards heaven right now. Let's just thank God for his goodness, all of his blessings. And ask him to speak to our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Love you this morning. You're standing at the harbor, the ship of hope has sailed. Your friends have no answers, and peace just can't be found. Oh, but there's a hand of mercy that can turn it all around.
still does miracles. <laughs> oh, my God, I thank you for it this morning. God, I praise you for it this morning. God, I praise you for the miracles. God, we believe you this morning. God, we believe you this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, we believe you this morning. God, I praise you for it this morning. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah, we thank you for it. God, with nothing but a miracle will do. God, with that heart. God, those lungs, those kidneys. God, with that home, that family. God, agree with this Jesus, let him wrap his arms around you right now this morning. Jesus just wants to tell you he loves you this morning. 
No matter what your condition is and where you're at, God loves you this morning. Come on, let him touch your heart this morning. Let him touch you in your spirit. Let him minister to you this morning. Hallelujah. He's a good God. That's what nothing but a miracle will do. God's a miracle-working God. Come on, just love him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship him. Reach on out. Don't be satisfied with just a dab. But the Spirit of God can cause a breakthrough in your life this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing that the hand of God cannot bring you through. I know He's more than able, and He will deliver you. When nothing but a miracle will do. When you cried out in the darkness, and no one sees.
because he'll strengthen you for the trials and the valleys and the battles to come. He refreshes you and he heals you. Let's just continue to leave God this morning. God's going in a different way than we planned, but God's got something here this morning. He's got some miracles for somebody. And you know what? I'm going to take one mine home with me. <laughs> In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. It's like he's prepared. It's like you go, you prepared your meal for today. If you don't go home and eat it, it can waste. Don't waste what God has done for us this morning. In the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we sit your sharing.
this morning. <laughs> Somebody ought to praise the Lord this morning. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. I said somebody ought to praise the Lord. Oh, my God. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, look what he's done for you. Somebody ought to praise him. Come on, somebody over here praise him. Hallelujah. Somebody over here praise him. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise the Lord for a moment. God, you didn't have to do it, but you saved me. You brought me back. Lord, you touched my home and my family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell your neighbor, God didn't have to do it, but he did this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise the Lord again. <laughs> now, Friday I went to the kidney specialist in uh, Flexner. Thank you, Lord. And uh, about three three months ago, a little over, I had Brother Wayne and, and the church here to pray for me. They done an ultrasound, and I had a tumor in my right kidney. And then they told me there wasn't nothing to worry about. And anyway, to make a long story short, I went to see the, see the doctor Friday, like I said. And he said, everything will look good. He said, I don't want to see you for another six months. And he said, this, everything is functioning normal for a man my age. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, give God a praise. <laughs> Nothing but a miracle will do. The Lord, I don't know if I've ever said this or not in all the years I've been preaching, but there's somebody here that your body has been holding a lot of fluid, even in your legs that you swell real bad. But God's touching your body. But you're going to start passing that fluid in the name of the Lord. I don't know who you are. Maybe three or four, I don't know. But I know one thing, God's moving upon you right now. Because it's been painful, especially in your legs. But tonight, God's touching you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel that. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He just done see, just touched somebody. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Jesus. People said it's not real, but it is. They say what you got's old fashioned. It don't really matter what they say. Hallelujah. But I know it's real this morning. Can't live without it. By the grace of God. Heaven knows he's a mighty good God this morning. Can't make it without it this morning. Lord, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Heaven knows he's a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. Tell you what I want you to do. I want you to just go across the aisle and just hug somebody's neck. Brother, hug a brother, sister, hug a sister's neck. Just tell them, say, hey, I'm on the winning side this morning. We'll come on over to the winning side. This morning, hallelujah. We're God's mighty army. We're God's mighty army. We will be denied. We will be denied. Come on over. Yeah, come on over. To the winning side. To the winning side. Now, if you've been tired, don't lose it, my soul. And you're searching for something.
Yes. We'll come on over, over. to the winning side. We are following Jesus. We are following Jesus. We got a better hill high. We got a better hill high. You got my heart. We will never be denied. Oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Well, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. How many of those miracles in the making? How many of those are a miracle here today? How many done got I done got me one? <laughs> It's so good to be in the house. Give God one more shout of praise this morning. Amen. Church is important. It's a blessing of the Lord. It really is this morning. And, uh, you know, some people may want to look down, down at you for going to a spirit-filled church. But if you ain't spirit-filled, if you ain't got no spirit, you're dead. It's plain and simple. I'm going to shout amen. I'm glad it's alive this morning. Amen. He's a mighty good God. Amen. He's a mighty good God. Amen. Well, I guess we can receive the offerings this morning. You ought to want to give good this morning. You know, somebody said a while back there was talking, uh, said, you know, said sometimes, uh, not here, but said, I go to church, said, I, when I go to church, I want to get real tired. I want to get sleepy and I just want to get feel draggy. Said, I can go out to a ball game. Said, I'm just a live wire. I said, you know what that is, don't you? I said, it's the devil. Amen. So God's a mighty good God this morning. There's a miracle here for us this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. If Brother Jason will come this morning. Amen. Good to see the your girls on the front bench again this morning. It really is. Amen. God's a mighty good God. I know he's a mighty good God. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and yes. we're going to receive the tithes and offerings this morning. Amen. We, as Pastor says, we appreciate your faithfulness. Amen. And uh, we need you to be a part of this. Not only, not only is it going to benefit the house of God, but man, what a blessing it is to give. Amen. Uh, uh, just as the Bible says, He is a warder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. He also says, "Give." Amen. He, he asked us to give, and amen, and he said he would give it back unto you. He said uh, that he would open the windows of heaven, and you wouldn't have room enough to receive it. And I'm, I'm a believer in that tonight, amen. And as we was talking about spirit-filled churches, when I was in the world, I wanted stuff that was real. And same way when I, I even tell people at the jail, I go to church. I love my church because I can feel it. It's, it's real. I like to feel what I'm doing is real. I, I challenge you this morning as you give to believe in what you're giving unto. Don't take it as just a natural or ritual thing we do every Sunday. I promise you God will bless you. Uh, you know the Bible says, uh, amen, we, 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 we shall reap if we, if we faint not. Amen. And I believe that tonight. I, I love there's a scripture in the Bible that said, you know, no matter what kind of financial shape you're in this morning, it's in James. It said, has God not chose the poor or the poor of this world, but rich in faith to be heirs of the kingdom of God? Amen. So, hallelujah. We are, no matter what you are financially, you're rich in the Lord this morning. The Bible said, amen, that 
he didn't say that everybody shall be rich. He said that you would be above and not beneath. Amen. He said you would be blessed regardless. If you got $20, it's a blessed $20. Amen. If you make $2,000 a week, hallelujah, it's blessed. Amen. What, whatever it is, it's blessed. And uh, I want to say this to encourage us this morning. Y'all know this scripture. It says, if God be for us, who, who can be against us? Amen. So no matter what you're going through in your finances, give your way out. Amen. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? I love this. He said, he that not spared his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not freely, freely give us all things? It's already yours anyway. Hallelujah. He, healing, it's yours. Hallelujah. Prosperity, it's yours because you're a child of God. Amen. So no matter what kind of drought, you can guarantee you're going to come out on the other side because it's a promise of God this morning. So I ask you to give in faith this morning. Give knowing, hallelujah, that God has got it under control. If the offering takers are come, we'll get ready to receive the offering. Reach your hands this way. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this part of the service. Father God, as we give under the kingdom of God, Father, we ask you to bless and multiply, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for multiplying. Thank you for blessing, Lord. Thank you for prosperity, Lord God. Thank you for what you're going to do and what we're going to reap, Father God. We're giving in faith this morning, trusting in you, Jesus. Amen.
And why should I worry? Why should I fear? For the very same Jesus, He is always near. And He lives in my heart. And He hears us when we cry. I just call on His name until my storm passes by. Light to the darkness when the way grew dim, and how great it be to have his footsteps and mine and walk with the master all of the time. And when troubles come, it death seems so nigh. I just call on my master, I know it gets there all time. full of pain all I have to do is just call on his name so why should I worry and why should I fear for the very same Jesus he is always near and he lives in my heart and he hears us when I cry I just call on the very same Jesus, He is always near. He lives in my heart, and He hears us when I cry. I just call on His name till the storm passes by. Sunday school. Amen. Really, to a point, God's always talking. We're just not listening well. Amen. I got a little sign on front on that door as you come to sanctuary where it says no candy, drinks, all this kind of stuff. And I've had I've people say, What does that mean? Just don't read well, I guess. I don't Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. We, we're not doing it. That's true. Amen. But God's a mighty good God. And sometimes God talks to us and we just do not get it. Amen. Well, God, that ain't for me. That's probably for somebody else. No, it's God talking to me. Amen. How many believe that this morning? Amen. Sister Marie.
there's a miracle here this morning. Amen. As I said, I've been so blessed this morning, been in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right, you may go to your Sunday school. We've got another one back here. Sister Missy, wait just a minute, children. I'm sorry, we've got one more. Yes, they're out there. How many believes that? Amen. Amen. They got to come in. Amen. By the power of God. Amen. All right, you may go to your Sunday school this morning. Quietly. I still need to make the announcement. If you don't have something to do out there, you don't need to be out there, okay? I say amen. We're in a generation like that today. How many believes that? Uh, further on that this morning, uh, someone sent me a text. I don't know who it was, if I can find it. Um, this is sort of humorous, too. It says, after church, Johnny tells his parents he wants to go and talk to the pastor right away. They agreed, and the pastor greeted the family. Pastor Johnny says... I heard you say today that our bodies came from dust. That's right, Johnny, I did, he says. And I heard that you say when we die, our bodies go back to the dust. Yes, I'm glad that you're listening, the pastor replied. Why do you ask? Well, you better come over to our house right away, Johnny says, and look under my bed because there's somebody always coming or going. Must be plenty of dust under his bed. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. <laughs> but God's a good God. I know mean, God's a good God this morning. Amen. I don't know who sent me that, but it's pretty, pretty good. I don't recognize the number, but amen. But God's a mighty good God. I know mean, he's a good God this morning. Amen. So when you see dust on your bed, realize <laughs> somebody may be coming or going. But God's a mighty good God. 
I, I want to share a couple of things with you this morning that the Lord shared me. Proverbs 28, 19. This is a familiar text. I'm not going to preach about a vision this morning, but I want to read it to you, and I want to share with you, and then I want to go to the book of uh, Acts chapter number 1, Daniel. Amen. God's a mighty good God. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 28 and 19. Um, and children, if I, I know you know it, but sometimes we don't realize it. There's so much caught up. And we've got, you know, there's, we have friends, we know neighbors, we've got people. But we're living in a society right now. If, if people can get their way, we're living in a crisis society. They've took God out of everything. Amen. You can't turn a television on and find anything godly much unless it's a Christian channel. Um, just everything has come to the point, and it didn't happen overnight. It, it's it, it, We've been going down this slippery slope for a long, long time. And now we've got to the point that you can't hardly find God in anything. And if a politician mentions God, I mean, they're going to eat him alive. He's a fanatic. He's a radical. Amen. And uh, we are fighting today for the moral the heartbeat of America, I believe that with all of my heart. Uh, when you look at the left, you look at the, the progression that they want to take us into, amen, it has nothing to do with God. And the Bible is always right. How many knows the Bible is always right? It, it ain't right sometimes. It's not right in a certain society. It's not right in a certain period of time. The Bible is right all the time. All the time the Bible is right. It's infallible. Its truths are forever. And what was truth in the beginning is still truth today. Amen. And, and when Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, as it was in the days of Noah, and you go back and you look at the days of Lot, you look at the days of Noah, and we go right back to a crossless society. Amen. They built, they ate, they drank, they married, they gave in marriage. They did all these things, but there's no mention of God. Somebody shout amen. Now, I know we like living here. We all enjoy life. Uh, amen. Uh, I think it's Brother Ryan said tonight, and I'm the same way. Amen. I want to go to heaven, but I'm not getting in line for the next bus load. You know, I mean, nobody wants to die, but I do want to go to heaven. Now, I don't think any of y'all sitting here this morning saying just, amen, because God has geared us to live, and, and this is what we know. But I am ready to go if he wants to take me. Amen. Now, that's assurance this morning that I do know that. Somebody shout Amen. And you need to know that without a shadow of a doubt. But the Bible says in Proverbs 28 and 19, Daniel, amen. Uh, and I want to just share this with you to the point to get you to understand about everything that you deal with, everything that, that you are in contact with has little or nothing to do with God. And the Bible said, love not the world. Now, it doesn't mean the grass and the trees and the birds and the pretty mountains. or Amen. That's, that's not the world he's talking about. It's a system that has been gathered, uh, amen, that is leading people away from God. Somebody shout amen. Anybody understand what I'm telling you right there? Amen. It's a system that leads to I remember uh, Brother Michael and, and different ones here this morning works for the Housing Corporation, which could be priceless or uh, one of the others. But I remember when they, was, they wouldn't even open on Sunday. I remember when the lottery tickets came out. They would not sell lottery tickets. And little by little, transitions came. And I will say this, and uh, the LGBT and all these others, they hate a Chick-fil-A, but I'm going to tell you, they're the, number, they're the third largest in the world today, and they still close on Sunday. And they won't back down. They have boycotted them. They've, they've shut uh, some of the wrestlers down in different places, and they just keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know what that's called? That's called the glory of God again. That's called the miracle of God. Amen. And I, I, I know society has changed. Amen. But I remember when it was hard to get a gallon of gas on Sunday. Anybody remember those days? It wasn't nothing then. We didn't have McDonald's. <laughs> Amen. We didn't have anything. And 
And uh, I, I'm just trying to say is, and, and some of these things may be for good, but a lot, but we have come so far, but the transition has changed so much, amen, that, that it, it's just hard to comprehend. And, you know, and I, I try to tell my kids, and they, get, they hear this sad story sometime, you know. I mean, when I was a kid, things are a lot different than they are today. We didn't have a house phone, let alone four phones in the house. And if you had one television, it was black and white, you was blessed. And if you if you had a color television, you had died and went to heaven. They had an antenna with a rotary motor on it. All you had to do is t- turn that little knob. We always went outside and turned it. it. What is it? Is it there? Hold it. Hold it. Don't move it. Does anybody remember those times? Hold your hand up if you do. Some of y'all don't. Shane, you don't remember them days. Bless your heart. Amen. But but then, how many remembers the party? You say, well, this guy didn't do a church. I'm trying to show you something. How many remembers the party lines? Had six or eight people uh, on, on your line. And you had to catch And then they could pick up and listen to you while you was talking. <laughs> Boy, things changed, hasn't it? I remember sending your pictures off your camera. Take two weeks to come back. And now you got them before you blink your eye. See, so, so many things has changed. And some things to the good. Technology has been good to us. But it also can lead us away. And we have to be careful and stay alert and aware that we don't go in the wrong direction with it. And what our children see. And and, and, I, and I believe this with all of my heart, and, and you as a parent has to make that decision, but our kids play too much f- games on these phones. And I know it's a way of babysitting and keeping them out of your hair, but that's not, that's not what God, tra- God called you to train your children. I'm not changing anything. Amen. And, you know, and this bothers me when I can tell your child, sit down and be quiet, and they'll go sit down and be quiet. I want y'all to listen to me. When I can tell your child, go sit down and be quiet, and they'll go up there and sit down and be quiet and not move, and you have to slap and beat and hoop and holler and throw a wild Indian fit. Now, you're not training your children. They know you don't mean what you're saying. <laughs> it's truth. Your children need to say, and, and yelling and screaming at your kids and shaking them and smacking them in the face, that is not a parent. Preach on Brother Wayne. Let your, you know, every time your kid goes, they're afraid you're going to knock their block off. That ain't, no. Train your children. Scream and yell it. Just say, sit down. Well, number two message. Somebody shout amen. It's a truth. God's a mighty good God. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Are we there, Daniel? 19, excuse me, 28, 19. Amen. I ain't got but a few minutes, so y'all don't have to worry about it. I can't preach long this morning. Be like Jimmy Lee. I got a whole bunch of notes here. I can preach for two hours. <laughs> but God's good. Are we, are we not there? 28, 19. Let's go twenty to go twenty nine eighteen then. Try that one. I didn't think Daniel was listening to me. <laughs> Somebody shout praise the Lord. All right, twenty nine eighteen. Eighteen. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Now listen. What that is saying is where there is no revelation, where there is no understanding of God, the people do what they want to do. And you can watch a person's life that does not have much fear of God in their life. They do what they think is right. Are you listening to me? Amen. I know people that says it's okay to horse trade, lie a little bit as long as you don't lie a lot. They have convinced themselves of that. 
So what I want to bring out to you this morning, Daniel, go to me to remember, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, where there's no redemption revelation of what God does, the people perish or they go unrestrained. They go without any guidance at all. And we this morning need to really cry out to God and thank God for the young people that we have in our church. The devil doesn't like them. He doesn't like you training them right. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. He, amen. Amen. He, he knows if he can, if he can get inside the family. And I want to preach just a couple minutes this morning. Amen. At the things of God. That, amen. Uh, are you there? I tell you what, do Daniel. Go, go to the book of Luke, chapter eleven. Go to the book of Luke, chapter eleven. I usually send him these scriptures, and this morning I did not get to send them to him. Uh, so I, I want to try to show you a couple things that God shared with me. May even preach some more of this tonight. I don't know. I don't know how God's going to work some things. Amen. But remember, amen. The Bible says this, verse uh, Luke 11 and verse number 17. Give God a shout of praise this morning, would you? Amen. amen. But he, knowing their thoughts, this was Jesus, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation or destruction or to ruin, and a house divided against a house falleth. Now listen to this. A house divided against a house, it will fall. How many knows, how many's ever had to wrestle and struggle with something in your life? I mean, it was a struggle. And the thing about it, you have to do this. Compromise is not the answer. You have to raise your flag of, uh, of God and say, God, it's your way, and we will not surrender it. Are you listening to me? Now, some things are hard on the flesh, but if you allow the flesh, it will run wild. It will lead you away from God. It does not have the mind of God. It don't want the things of God. Only the Spirit wants the things of God. Amen. So here's the thing about this. Now, I want to preach about unity and division for just a few moments this morning. And you know what? When we came in here this morning, and there was a spirit that we came here to worship God, when we in the same agreement, you know, and, and I look at this sometimes. Uh, um, uh, Brother Buddy, can I use you just for a moment? Uh, Brother um, Sean, can I use you for a moment? Amen. Now, these are two vessels, but they contain the same thing. If they're saved, they have the same spirit inside. Now, the thing about this is I can't see their spirit. Now, sometimes we look at these vessels and we look at this vessel and say, mm, I don't like that vessel. And we look at this vessel and say, I love this one or vice versa. So I don't want to make you know. Are you listening to me? And but we go, we don't get past looking at the vessel or the pot or everyone. Amen. We've got to know what's in here. And when we know what's in here, and sometimes we, we, we all do things that, you know, we get on each other's nerves. Have you ever been on, got on somebody's nerves? <laughs> How many have ever got on your nerves? Somebody got on your nerves. Okay. That don't make them a bad person. Don't make them a person that you just can't, you know, am I telling the truth? Yes, Amen. Uh, uh, it, it, it's amazing. Oh, but see, the same spirit that lives in him lives in him. And when we can come together and realize, amen, we're not looking at the exterior, we're seeing something on the greater than that. And when we get a church like that, amen, that we accept, amen, I'm not, amen, the Bible said know them at labor money. I'm not going to jump it off the cliff or go and follow something that ain't God. But when you go to a house of God, amen, your church, and you know where it's at, we should look at the vessel and say, I know what's in the vessel. And what's in the vessel makes all the difference. Can I get a witness? Now, your actions are going to prove what you got on the inside of you. Amen. And you realize so many times that when he grabs that flag up there, he's not even doing it for himself. Now, let me just ask you. Are you doing it for yourself every time? Why, why do you do it? Or why are you doing it sometimes then? If I don't do it, it don't feel right. Okay, okay. Something tells me I got to do it. I don't know. Do you realize what you're, see, there's a building that's getting ministered to while you do that flag. That's right. And when, when God is using this vessel, well, he's just carrying a flag. But you know, he can minister. If you're receptive to that, he'll bless you. How many has been blessed by that? Now, <laughs> look. Now, how many times has the devil told you 
That ain't, that ain't doing no good. No fun. How many times you ever thought about not doing it? I thought about not doing it this morning. See, that, you understand what I'm saying? So when we, you know, and I, I love people when they, when, they, when they do come together and, and they can hug each other's necks or they can cry or shake each other's hands. Amen. You're doing something. You're bringing the body together. You're washing the whole body, not just the face. So when we work as a body, there is no limit to what God can do. Now, when we only do certain things, see, God works in unity, Satan works in division. That's the only way the devil can work is in chaos or division. And that's how the devil works. And the, before the devil can get me divided with you, I have to get divided within myself. And that's where the devil works. And my house won't stand too long if I stay divided because the storms are going to come. That's a promise. Let me believe that. Amen. Now, thank you, two brothers, for right now. May you use your gift. Amen. So when, I, when we begin to look into this, Satan, amen, when the church started on the day of Pentecost, it was in one accord. Amen. The, the word accord and the word, amen, the word unity, amen, are, are, are related. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? The word unity means to be united as with one, as with a single spirit. Amen. You're not divided. You're, you're not, amen, in, in chaos. Amen. You're not saying, well, you know, I don't know about church. I don't know about getting in church. I don't know about making a decision. I don't know about making a commitment. See, we have to make commitments. You know why I'm here today? By the grace of God, then I had to make a commitment. If it's raining, I'm going to spiritually say it. Not just in my body. Now listen, you can come to this church five days a week and sit here and wear a hole in this chair, in the chair you sit and die and go to hell. Just because you're sitting here this morning doesn't mean that you're even with me. Only in our spirits do we, if, that, that we're together. How can two walk together except they be agree? See, we have to have be an agreement of something. Somebody shout amen. I love when Brother Sexton said it at that time, and I've used it many, many times. Amen. He said if Sister Sexton, y'all remember that many years ago, he got up and he said if Sister Sexton ever packs her bags and leaves, I'm going to pack mine and go with her. He's in agreement. You go, I go. Amen. Really, that's biblical because where Ruth and Naomi did that, she said where you go, I go. Where you lodge, I lodge. If you eat, I eat. If you don't eat, I don't eat. So see, there's a oneness in our spirits. But then our actions are going to tell, amen, that we have that oneness in our spirits. Amen. Now, we all, amen, we all have battles. We all have things we have to wrestle with. But, amen, when it's continuously that it wears us down and it begins to discourage us that, amen, I want to be in agreement. Amen. If Brother Sean's packing the flag or if Brother Buddy's on this altar, I want to be in unity with them guys. Amen. If, 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 if Sister Jean is singing, amen, and I don't get to sing, amen, amen, I, I want to be with her singing. Somebody shout amen. Somebody told me, I wish you would sing more. And somebody said, I wish you wouldn't sing that much. <laughs> I like the first guy better, but anyhow, somebody shout amen. But God's still good. Somebody shout amen. But I try to do what I feel by the Spirit of God and that leadership. How many ever, amen, because you never know what somebody's went through this past week. You don't know they went to the doctor Friday, and the doctor says, you know, this is bad news. Now, they come in and put a good front on, but you don't. But you fail to pray for them. And I've looked at people and said, there wasn't nothing wrong with them, but God said pray for them. And I had, amen, there was a young lady who came to Rowena one morning. They stopped in, amen, the, 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 is a family of them. And, and, and they stopped in. That dad said, I, I really felt led to stop at this church. Some of y'all was there when it happened. And, and the young lady sat in the back back there, and, and, and the service was something like the day. And, and I said, young lady, can I pray for you? She said, no. No. Well, that didn't change me. I know what God told me to do. Now, I've done what God asked me to do. I die believing that. And and the and I don't know if it's her daddy or her uncle, ever who he was that came up. He said, "I want to." He said, I, "I don't want you to feel bad over what you just did." And I looked at him and said, "Don't mean it's wrong, but I don't because I know what God told me." He said, "That girl has got all kinds of problems." He said, "She's 
and she went through saying, I won't have to go through, through all that. And I, I said, I know. I see what I saw. I saw a bunch of black bugs just crawling all over her. And I knew that girl had some problems. And God wanted to touch that lady that day, but that demon in her, somebody shout amen. And if you don't want the devil out of you, you won't get him out of you. <laughs> somebody shout amen. So it's important with you and I this morning and the spirit of unity. Can I get a witness in here? And Jesus knew their thoughts and he knew that, amen, and they was, amen, what Jesus was doing was casting out devils, amen, out of people. And then and the Pharisees and the Sadducees began to stand by and they looked and they began to judge him and they said he's casting out devils by the prince of devils, uh, Belgebug. And Jesus said, whoa here, you're doing something that's very bad. Amen. You're not just not liking me. You call him the Spirit of God an evil spirit. Now, some people say that, you know, they don't know what blaspheme the Holy Ghost is, and this is where this scripture comes from right here. When you denounce God that he has an evil spirit or what the things of God is evil, that's blaspheming God. And you can't be forgiven over this world, the world will come, when you're in that unbelief spirit like that. Somebody shout Amen. And then people did that, amen. And listen, listen, somebody, I've had people come to me, oh, I prayed I blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm seeking God. I'm, I said, you ain't blasphemed no Holy Ghost. If you bless, you won't be up here praying and get, won't get prayer. You'll be rejected of everything that you're wanting. So, uh, amen, go on and pass that to just a moment this morning. But see, when you get divided, Satan loves division. And division will weaken you. Amen. From standing strong in what you believe. I still believe in a, a Holy Ghost Pentecostal God sent church. I still believe in clapping hands. It's in the Bible. I still believe in laying hands on the sick and they get better. They recover. How many believes that this morning? Now, amen. This world will tell you that that's crazy. That, amen. Some of your neighbors won't even like you because of that. Amen. Amen. Those people that maybe look down this church because of what we do. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If they get enough trouble, they'll probably want somebody to pray for them like that. Amen. I've seen God have ways of humbling people that they, they wanted prayer. Amen. Can I get a witness in here this morning? So I want in that spirit of unity. And, and you know, listen, amen. And, and here's the thing. We have to come together as a, for the very first scripture, amen, without a vision. We've got to come together with a common purpose. Amen. I believe in what this church does. I believe it's right what this church does. You can't stand back there or, or amen. And listen, if you don't live right, now I will say this, if you don't live right, you don't need to be up here praying for nobody. If you're out here running around with people all week long that's got reputations that's not good, you don't need to be up here. I believe, I believe in getting people to have you pray. But you need, you need to be right. When you come up here to pray for somebody, you need to amen, have their concern to feel their need. Not just. <laughs> I'm going to take my coat off. It's getting warm up here. Somebody shout amen. That's just the way it is. You, amen, angry all week, throw fits all week, carry on. Amen, foul words out of your mouth. You don't be up here praying. You need to, you need to want to be up here getting prayer. Good preaching, brother Wayne. It's just the way it is. Now I need now when we have to get somebody to pray. I need folk up here. You know your life. Well, I mean, you know. Well, glory. If your life. If, if, if you live an immoral life, running around with no clothes on, four or five guys following you around like a, an old mama dog and a bunch of hound dogs, you don't need to be up here praying for people. That's the easiest I can say that. Anything else, is, <laughs> you, some of you going to go, <laughs> somebody shout amen. It's the truth. Now, if God forgives you and, and you in your life is lined back up, great. Somebody shout amen. See, we're talking about unity this morning. Now, 
When you and your husband or wife, amen, y'all got problems, you have to come to some kind of agreement. We've got a purpose. Our marriage is important. Because the next deadhead you, uh, 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 what you get. I don't know what people think they don't have to work the next marriage or the next one. And I'm going to tell you, that dream sickle guy, honey, he'll melt just like anybody else does. His underarms stink like everybody else's does. Am I preaching pretty good to y'all this morning? God's good. So, you know, you have to have a purpose. Amen. So, Gina, amen. We, our, our marriage is important. And, and, and those things that, you know, I have to do, she has to do to keep the marriage flourishing. Some, a man said one time, he wrote a book on it. He said, I can always tell uh, uh, about a man if he opens the wi- uh, door for his, his wife's uh, wife. Either he's got a new car and don't want her to bang the door or he's got a new wife. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. I told her, you know that? I said, uh, she said, I opened the door for her. I said, I got a new wife. I'm trying to do my, you're look, hey, hey. Amen. I don't look at her as, oh, amen, amen. I, I like to renew this, amen. Somebody shout amen. Now, uh, I, I, you know, and, and every one of us is different, but I'm a fluffy duffy. That's what somebody called me one day. I'm proud of it. Somebody shout amen. At least fluffy duffy gets to go home and land the nest. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and preach a while. Somebody shout amen. Unity. It's to be of, of a single spirit. And Satan hates that singleness of purpose and interest and intent. Amen. Uh, with, with an attitude. Amen. When I come to church, I've got a, I've got a purpose. I'm coming to t- Hallelujah. As you get that flag, as you, amen, you bless me. Amen. Amen. Listen, when I come here, I want to be a blessing to somebody. I want somebody to be a blessing to me. Amen. I, I, I need prayer a lot. I need help. Somebody shout amen. I need encouragement. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, you know. I, I, I told a guy this one time, and amen, uh, bless his heart, uh, uh, he said something about somebody. I said, yeah, I said, brother, I said, I need to. He said, but you don't need it, really. I said, yes, I do. I said, listen, that guy, ever what he said, amen, and, and he, he was talking about somebody. I said, did he feed your soul? No, 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 I just know, you know, he was trying. I said, well, that's good. But I said, the thing about it is, if I feed your soul, I give you something. I need something back. Amen. Amen. Listen, it it means something to get your soul fed. Can I get a witness in here this morning? So the word accord and the word unity, amen, and the whole book of Acts is interwoven with the word uh, unity and the one accord. And I I can give you Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14. So you've got to understand, Satan works in a divided house. Satan can only work if you get divided. That's where he can get you to back up, to compromise, to quit church, amen, to back up, to cool down, to quit, amen. Satan works in confusion. How many believes that? Amen. Where there's, uh, where there's evil and, and where there's uh, uh, envy and strife and jealousy, this is how Satan works in your life. Amen. Listen, if somebody buys a new car, I'm happy for them. Who cares? I'd hate to not have enough salvation that a, a, a car causes me not want to go to church. And if you live in a house, a double wide, a, a modular home, if you live, listen, amen, full wall, listen, walls and paint, God, I lived in that trailer right down there with the front door. You had to step around the hole in it. There was one in the back door because of the water heater, and we couldn't get the thing out, and it was a leaking. It got the floor wet, and I was just as happy down there as I was up here. Things don't make you what you are. And we've got all these things, and they're still not happy. Am I preaching good? I'd love to come into a service like this and have the Spirit of God to refresh my spirit. Amen. Listen, I know people that's got everything and they've got such a heaviness on their spirit and their spirit's not free and they're grieved all the time and they walk in a darkness. 
man, give me the light, give me the, let my spirit feel good. Hey, man, I'll wear holes in my shoe. It wouldn't matter. Anybody hear what I'm telling you this morning? Amen. Now, I'm not telling you you've got to be poor, you've got to be broke. Amen. I'm not telling you not to have nice things. Amen. I'm not telling you any of that stuff. But I'm just telling you, those things do not bring me what I have need of this morning. Amen. And when I see people come up here this morning and they got a touch of heaven, amen, God touched their home, God touched their bodies, God touched their mind, God touched them because they was in a depression or ever what it might have been. God is a good God. Somebody shout, God is a good God this morning. Amen. And I'd rather see that. Amen. I can leave here today and say, look what the Lord has done. How many felt the sweet spirit of the Lord here this morning? That it touched your heart. It caused even tears. Your emotions got involved in it. Amen. Amen. I go in churches and, amen, I've had to deal with it here. Amen. People hard, resistant. Man, it's hard. To, you can't preach like that. Then people will not receive anything. It's hard ground. It just falls on them. And the first thing you know, amen, it's gone by the time you got side. That's the word of God. It fell on stone or fell on hard ground by the wayside. And the fowls out came immediately and stole it away. Amen. You have to get up and be a doer of what you hear and preach. Am I preaching good to y'all right now? Amen. So God is saying to us this morning, when we come to, when, come here, brother. Amen. Amen. You want to go north. You know which way north is? If you don't, I can tell you. I know. Which, you know which way north is? Which way is it? Yeah, but what, I mean. Now, here we go. Here we go. I didn't ask him that. What taught him? Lord, you can't. I mean, he should have just pointed north. Which way is north? Now, let me see. I, now, 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 north is, yeah, yeah, you're right. Get it over here. So hard. We do this all the time as humans. But I'm going south. Let's walk together, okay? You're going north. The, 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 does he drive a truck? <laughs> He says, you get lost. <laughs> but see, this is what happens. Now, we come to church like this, or we get anything done. But we come together and say, we're going to walk together. If it's east, that's east, right? We're going east. If we're going to go north, let's go north. You want to go south? Come on, tell me. Let's go south. Let's go. Now, as long as we can agree, no, I ain't going. I ain't going that way. Next thing you know, what we then he gets resistant against me. I get resistant. And can, can, can God move to either one of us? And, here, and here's the thing about it. Then here comes somebody, you know, that you know, we, we question. Come here, brother. I mean, you know, his life is not as good as ours. Straight up, brother. Straight up. You let that. And, you know, he, he face us, please. Can I pay some of y'all to work for me? Because free help ain't working this morning. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I need to make myself clear, don't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blame me for it. Don't Can't you understand anything? But anyhow, see, hey, is this not us? Is this not us? And we come to church. See, we need this. Now, here comes a guy. I don't like you for what you've been doing. Now, we're hard. We, we, we resist it. Spirit of God tries to move. Here comes poor old Sean. He's iffy. Come here. Come here. And, and raise your hands and carry on. And we will. <laughs> he didn't get much, did he? <laughs> God. But you know what? We won't receive this because of who we are. And God is so grieved. This is why God leaves a lot of churches. He gets grieved at the people. Amen. And he just pulls back his spirit. Because if God tries to move and you don't, then God's judgment has to come next. And we don't want God's judgment, do we? So the unity of the spirit is, I love you, buddy. I know you need prayer. Amen. Now, I may not give you the microphone. You might not get to preach. But amen. I love you. I'm going to pray for you. Keep on, keep on pushing. So we agree. Well, hallelujah. Look what we got this morning. We, got, we have got some unity here. So what can God do when we all in this same agreement this morning? All things are possible to him that can believe this.
Amen. And what can God do with 50, 75, 150 people that can come together with one purpose? I come to worship God. I didn't come to check, see what you had on. I didn't come to see what, what's your latest news that you've got to tell me. What, what juicy stuff you got on so-and-so. Come on, somebody. But we come together as we did this morning. God just went to the glory of God. It makes all, my God, somebody ought to praise God in this house this morning. How many knows it makes all the difference in the world? Now, amen, if, if you're testifying, God bless you, buddy, amen. Thank God you're, you're in the house of God this morning, amen, amen. amen. Thank God that we're in agreement. To, am I still preaching to you, amen? amen. Now, you got to remember, listen, sometimes the vessel is Sister Jean, maybe it's Jeannie, maybe it's Sister Audrey, maybe it's Brother Wayne. We're talking about singing for the moment here, okay? Uh, maybe it's Jason and Robert. Maybe it's just Robert. Maybe it's Austin. And if you can flow with his spirit or with her spirit, you'll be blessed. It'll start going from here to here to here, back over here. And next thing you know, people are being touched all over. See? The Bible talks about two men building a house. Now, some say they were brothers. I don't know. I don't know. Some say they were neighbors. But they did have to be in the same community. And they both built houses. And one did it the right way and one did it his way. And the same storm came for both houses. Not a bit of difference in the storm. And one house survived and one house failed. You know why? Because one was in the unity of the Spirit to say, I'm going to do it the way the Word says do it. I don't think i got to dig that deep, but I'm going to tell you, when the storm comes, you'll be glad that it dug that deep. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Now, let me tell you. Thank, uh, I'll tell you what. Can I use you? Come on up here. You be seated for a second. Am I still preaching good to y'all? The first place that Satan starts working to divide the house is right there. Now, either by dissension, them arguing between themselves, or he's doing something wrong, and she supports what he does wrong. Did I say that again? Do I need to say that again? Not just <laughs> them fussing between each other. This house can't stand long and them arguing all the time. You'll, one of y'all close up. Y'all may still live on the same roof for years, but y'all not, you know, you're, 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 not, you're, you're not one. Am I preaching good to y'all? There's a lot of people living in the same house, but they ain't one. Man, now, if you close up, now, but you both listen to that nagging. And don't look at it as that. She's trying to help. And I know she got a problem. I know it's a little, I know she exaggerates sometimes. She goes over there. I can understand that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, boy, he calls me and talks to me. Yeah. How do you think I know all this? Well, hey, hang on. I got some more to tell you. Oh, <laughs> oh don't hug her now. You're too late, buddy. Somebody shout amen. I got this ball on the roll. <laughs> Somebody shout Am, am I telling the truth this morning? No, no, he ain't called me at all and told me nothing about you. I promise you he hasn't. I promise that. He, you know that better anyhow. But anyhow, but anyhow, but here's the thing, you know, and, and then then he gets upset. He don't want, he pours back at you. Then he shuts down. You shut down. Is there any unity there? Then we tell our kids. Listen to us. They don't want to listen to. I'm preaching good. I gotta hurry. Oh God, I ain't gonna. Know. This ain't even the, all the message. But see, it starts here. You bring it into church. Then you get Heather on your side. He gets me on his side. I'm for him. She's for you. You got a voice. You got a voice. Amen. Is God gonna move much? He'll try to come in and move, but she's. I stand up. Won't work. 
How many of y'all want God to move? How many of y'all want to see God heal the sick? How many of y'all want to see unity? How many of y'all want to see the God? So if he, if he, if he can start here, this is where the devil's going to start it at. Thank y'all. Y'all, y'all safe now. Okay. <laughs> Chris, can I use you and Kim? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Amen. But God's still good. Heaven knows God's still good. And then Heather is like her mama. And she gets snappy sometimes. You're smart, ain't you? You're smart. Ain't like Buddy. Yo. You're smarter than that, ain't you? <laughs> well, we'll see if you are. And Heather... And then she snaps at you about something. She says, Man, am I preaching good to y'all? I watched Andy Griffith one time. I can preach a message like this. Somebody shout, Amen. They got in a fight. Two guys got in a fight over the chickens. Amen. One put a fence up, and the other guy, other guy couldn't, his, his garden couldn't get no sunlight because of the fence. And he said, Well, why don't you just put up chicken wire and the sun can shine through the fence? Sometimes we need to take down the wood and put up a, fan, a, a chicken wire. Well, some of y'all got that and some of you didn't, bless your hearts. Amen. Because Satan knows that a kingdom divided cannot stand. Can I get a witness in here? But amen. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14. I'm still going to preach good to you for just a moment. Amen. Give God a shout of praise in here. Amen. The word accord, amen, has a similar definition. It means to be in harmony with no dissension. Amen. No, no, you know, not, to, well, I don't think it this way. I don't believe it that way. We come together to love God. How many of y'all come together to love God? How many of y'all come together to worship God? How many of y'all come together? Amen. And listen, and I, we, we've been very blessed but can we improve on this listen I've been married almost 45 years and December the 7th amen I'll be with Sister Jean and I will be married 45 years and you know what I can improve on my marriage today I can be a better husband today amen I can do things better today amen God's good Amen. My marriage is not my marriage is not eternal secure. Amen. In this world, I have to work my marriage. Amen. And she has to do a lot of praying. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. God's good this morning. I'm trying to preach to you this morning just for a few minutes. The Bible says, amen, and they all continue in what? One accord in prayer and supplication. Look at this this morning. Amen. They continue in one accord. Amen. One and accord. Amen. They're coming together. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah in, in, in harmony. Amen. We've got one purpose this morning. How many believe we got one purpose? Amen. To see the lost saved, uh, to see the sick healed, uh, the saints encouraged, uh, and one day we'll all go to heaven. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? Amen. Listen, a half a dozen different ideals will not work. I told some people one time I was going to build a house. I said, now listen. I said, there are going to be some friction building the house if you ain't real careful. Because she's going to want to spend money. How many people? God, I got something y'all look at me like. And, and she won't say, why a medium-grade carpet is enough? I don't want that medium-grade. It won't last, what she'll say. If you're going to spend that much money, just get the best. Am I, am I, that's what he told me. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. <laughs> You'll take that old bedroom suit there. It's cheaper. She's going to sleep in it. She'll say, that thing's got press wood. It's just press wood. It'll fall apart. Yeah, but honey, come on, I'm preaching much. <laughs> yeah, in two weeks, you got to go by my bed. Somebody shout amen. And then, then, I told you so. All you, she won't let you forget it. Somebody shout amen. You see, I'm, I'm using the natural to, to get us to the spiritual realm this morning. How many loves God this morning? Now listen, there's a time, I see this. God will work in a song that my, it's a fire in you. And then sometimes I've seen God and people all over the house just are going everywhere. Then I've seen somebody get up and say, 
Oh, how I love Jesus. And the power of God just fall. Do you know there's people that want songs like that? Every how God moves, that's the way I want to go. Every way, listen, every one of you need to be a Zacchaeus. I, I, I looked up at them. It's awesome. Zacchaeus, do you know what kind of tree Zacchaeus climbed up in? That's what I thought it was too. But it wasn't no sycamore tree. Now some of y'all said, yes, it is. I read it. You need to read it again. Zacchaeus climbed up in a Seymour tree. <laughs> How many of y'all got it? Did you get it, Brother Anderson? Zacchaeus climbed up in that tree to see more. Not a sycamore. <laughs> now, it was a sycamore tree, but he climbed up to see more. Why do you think he got in the tree? So next time you need to, you need to climb a Seymour tree. Somebody shout hallelujah. I like to flip while I'm singing that. Hallelujah. A Seymour tree. How many of us, we need to get to see more sometimes. And we can see more. Oh, God, what will God do? I held to the faith with Sister Minnie. They would have to break her leg. And she'd have to be six weeks, couldn't even put no pressure on it. But amen, could do hardly anything for six weeks. Thank God that didn't happen. Six weeks she was going to, amen, not be able. And she'd come here this morning with that stick <laughs> walking on. And she didn't need that. She just used that for maybe a little say, Maybe poke Bryant. Do what now? <laughs> I love you. You you just <laughs> somebody shout him. Well, at least he told the truth. <laughs> somebody shout amen. But God, I'm not God is good like this. And we come together in unity. And we care about one another. And I know we do, but I want it to be better. How many of y'all want it to do more? Amen. Amen. I thank God for what we have here at Solid Rock. But, oh, God, if men you can get together, amen, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1, look at what I'm trying to say here. Amen. When you see the mighty move of God in the book of Acts, it was all like this. Amen. 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 On the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in what? Yes, sir. Amen. When we walk together, it, there's nothing can stop us. And the devil knows it. So that's why he tries to divide, because it weakens. It weakens. And listen, amen. She's got her own burden to bear, but you've got one too. And where she don't, a little weak at, you may not be weak there, but you're weak somewhere. And her strength will make your weakness strong, and your strength will make her weakness strong, because we are body. Let me believe that. The yeah, Pentecost was fully come. They were what? In one place. Tell your neighbor that's what happens. Amen. How many believe that? How many, how many looking for a revival like this right here? Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, let me show you something. Amen. Amen. Da Daniel, go to James chapter 1 and verse 8. Now, I've got to hurry. Amen. Just a couple minutes. Give me a couple minutes. Ja James chapter 1 and verse number 8. Amen. Here's the thing that Satan wants to do to you. If he can do this, he has you. He'll destroy what you got. Don't let him destroy what you have. Amen. Years and years you put in. How many of y'all been married five years? Let me see your hand. At least five years. How many of y'all been married 10 years? Raise your hand. How many of you been married 15 years? Raise your hand. Why let the devil destroy something like that? All them years. All them years. Now, you didn't marry a perfect person. And they done wrong. Some may be worse than others. But you know what? It won't work. Look at this. A double-minded man is what? Next verse. I close. Let a brother of low degree. So, amen. Let me back up to verse 7. Back up to verse 7. Back up to verse 6. Let him ask in faith, no, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. This morning, I've seen God do miracles for people if they'll receive it. 
But you cannot be double-minded, double-hearted, two different spirits. Now, they're treating a lot of people, and I don't know anybody in here that does or not. So, but, you know, you go to the doctor and you tell them those few things. They say, I believe you're bipolar. Well, I know by what that meant. I meant too, but I know what polar was. That means you've got two personalities living on the inside of you. They start giving you medicine for it. One's mean and one's good. That's just a quick definition of it. Somebody shout amen. Now I said, now wait a minute here. Just a plain old devil. If you do a lot of praying, you're going to get rid of one of them. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to have to. <laughs> and one of them's going to rule. Now, I'm not saying some people don't have a, a mental disorder. I'm not saying that. Somebody shout amen. But the most of us, prayer will cure us. Am I preaching good to y'all? Amen. I told God, I said, God, I'm going to change and I'm going to hold on to you until you change me. Because, God, you're the only one that can change me. But i got to be willing for God to change me. Somebody shout amen. And this morning, amen. Let him ask your faith not waver. For he that wavers like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Next verse, please. Amen. Look at this. I close. Come to music. Let him not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You can't do it being double-minded. Because when God wants to move here, you're over yonder. I close with this statement. Little Richard, or we got a kid, we got a little kid in here this morning. Are they all out? A man said this one time. He said, I challenged God. I went through some things and I challenged God to come down and talk to me. And I challenged him. And I said, if you're really God, and he's made a big deal about something. And he said, God ain't real. But I challenged God and God wouldn't answer the challenge. If little Richard challenged me to a fight, I would ignore him. Now, God wants to answer you, and there's times when God doesn't do it the way you want it. But to challenge God and say that God ain't real because he didn't do this, it ain't going to work. I'm preaching real good to y'all this morning. Amen. How many of y'all want to come together in the spirit of unity like you've never had and say, God, I want to be healed of this. How many of y'all want to be healed this morning? The Bible said Daniel purposed in his heart not to eat that meat. You know what Daniel didn't do? He didn't eat that meat. You can purpose in your heart some things this morning, change some things by the grace of God. Preaching good to you this morning. Amen. Listen, and I don't, I don't mean this critically. There are some doctors that will have you on anything and tell you everything. Because you don't understand when they write you a prescription, they're counting the money they're going to get back from the drug company. Going to pay a Mercedes payment. Going to buy that bigger house. They write enough of them, they're going to send them on trips. And while you and while they in Hawaii kick back on the seashore, you're going, oh. Not being critical. I'm just telling you the facts. Amen. So sometimes we just have to humble ourselves. Come to God and say, God, my way of thinking is not right. I need your way this morning. God, and I'm willing to go your way regardless of what I want to do. How many believe that this morning by the grace of God? Would you all of this building just raise your hand and say, God, I want that spirit of unity, the spirit of division, this spirit of dividing me, and this spirit of that I... I'm facilitating. I'm not, I, I can't make my mind up. Got to stop this morning. God, I make my mind up to do God to serve you. I raise my flag, my banner high, that I serve God. Come on, would you reach out and touch him this morning? Is there somebody here that still needs to hear from heaven? For 30 seconds, all I'm asking, 30 seconds can change your life this morning. It can change your life. I want to be what God wants me to be. If your husband don't choose to love you, you choose to love him anyhow. I ain't going to tell you it be easy, but you can change him. 
Amen. Love her. Choose to love her. Choose to fight. And say, God, you started this good thing, and you're going to finish it. Come on, raise your hands and love you for just a moment, please. I thank you, Father. God, that we can take a step forward this morning by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Give me another 15 seconds or so. I feel the Spirit of God touching that. In the name of Jesus. God, I want to thank you for Solid Rock, the unity that we have. But God, that we can all improve this morning. And God, that we'll stand together. God, no matter what vessel you use, we won't just look at the vessel. But God, that we'll look at what's in the vessel by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you for it this morning. I praise you for it this morning. God, touching every person. God, you know those that struggle in their minds, fighting depression. God, I ask you, God, that deliverance this morning right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody's walking through this thing right now. Hallelujah. And you're coming out of it by the power of God. Come on, just love him. Just love him right now for just a moment. Anybody else need prayer before we change this service? I want the hand of God this morning. Anybody else want prayer? Folks, what God's given you is a blessing this morning. God's given you a fine family. A lot of things God's working on this morning. Come on, love him. Come on, love him this morning. God gave me this message. I didn't know you'd be here. I didn't know you wouldn't be here. I don't, I don't know. All I know is I obey what God gives me this morning. He wants to touch you. Come on, he wants to touch you this morning. Come on, would you love me? been blessed this morning would you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning come on come on give God a shout of praise we've had an awesome service look at David say tonight we're gonna go a little deeper how much see some folk get to feel the Holy Ghost tonight amen you just get stirred up you'll see the self this evening and you tell what God will do somebody shout amen